Right. We've uh, managed to squeeze our way through the first three articles of the Constitution, legislative, judicial, or legislative, executive, and judicial. Now we're going to go on to Article 4. Article 4 basically talks about how the states and federal government were going to interact, and it also sets up state citizens. So let's go to page 33 and read Article 4, Section 2. It says, The citizens of each state shall be entitled to all the privileges and immunities of citizens in the several states. Notice, please, that the word citizen is capitalized. Okay? And you are a citizen of each state. So let's fill in the blanks. A citizen of Texas shall have shall be entitled all the privileges and immunities as citizens of Florida, citizens of California, citizens of Oklahoma. So what kind of citizens are we talking about? State, state. state citizens. When the founding fathers got together to form the Constitution, Benjamin Franklin would stand up and announce, introduce himself as a citizen of Pennsylvania. Thomas Jefferson was a citizen of Virginia. You were a citizen of your state. A United States citizen was just kind of an abstract concept. You know, it's like one of those many. We don't, we're not going to list all 50 of them. So it's an abstract concept. So, but you have privileges and immunities. Is that good to have privileges? Mm -hmm. Well, it depends. What it, what it was doing, if you are a citizen of Texas, are you a citizen of Oklahoma? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so when you go from the United States to France, do you get all of the, the things that citizen, French citizens do? No, because you're out of your territory. So if you are a Texas citizen and you go to Oklahoma, you don't have all the same rights that you know Oklahoma citizens do, except for Section 2, which says that you will have all the privileges and immunities of citizens of the several states. So legally, you don't have rights, but we're going to extend you those same privileges. So that basically, it's you know all 50 states are the same. But you are a state citizen, and they are extending you these privileges when you go to the other states. Now let's go to the uh, 14th Amendment on page 48. <coughs> the 14th Amendment, section 1, says all persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. Well, that doesn't sound terribly <coughs> onerous, does it? That sounds pretty simple. Okay, But let's look at citizens of the United States. That's a lowercase c. And they left out the word citizen the second time, but it's you're a citizen of the United States and a citizen of the state wherein you reside. So what is that? That's dual citizenship, isn't it? You're a United States citizen and a state citizen. Well, which one comes first? United States citizen. So in that clause, which one takes precedence? United States citizen. Well, it still doesn't take sound too bad, except when you go back and read the second line, it says, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof. What are the people in England called living under the king? Subject. Subject. <coughs> do they have any say so? No, the king says you're going to do this or else. A subject has no rights. You want to be subject to anybody? I don't. Now, the fact that it's a lower KC is not you know, a mistake. It also says all persons born or naturalized in the United States. What's a person? Oh, well, good. So if we look at uh, page 20 in your handout, a person, in, and this is from uh, Black's Law Dictionary, in general usage, a human being, i.e., a natural person. 
So when we are talking in conversation, we mean, you know, warm flesh and blood body. Though, by statute, the term may include labor organizations, partnerships, associations, corporations, legal representatives, trustees, trustees in bankruptcy, or receivers. See 29 U.S.C. 152. That's Title 29 of the United States Code, Section 152. And the scope and delineation of the term is necessary for determining those to whom 14th Amendment of the Constitution affords protection, since this amendment expressly applies to person. A corporation is a person within the meaning of the 14th Amendment Equal Protection and Due Process Clause. So Ford Motor Company is a person. Microsoft is a person for legal terms. Isn't that wonderful? You get all the same privileges as Microsoft. Now, what is a juristic person? If I decide that we're all going to go into business together, we have to sign a, uh, we, we put an ad in the newspaper for several weeks in a row. It says our little group is doing business as Acme Fireworks. So seven, eight weeks later, whatever the time frame is, we have a company, Acme Fireworks. Do you know that Acme Fireworks is born? That's the terminology. This company is now born. Now, is Acme Fireworks human? Does it have freedom of religion, freedom of speech, or right to keep and bear arms? No. It's an artificial entity. It has whatever privileges that you and I and the state of Texas give it. A jurist is another word for the judge. The jury are the 12 people sitting there in the box. Anything which is juristic has to do with court. A juristic person is this artificial entity. Now. If I take us out into the parking lot here and I'm demonstrating my greatest, latest uh, bottle rocket and it works really, really good, except it burns down somebody's barn. Does the owner of the barn have a right to sue Acme Fireworks? Yes. How many people are suing Firestone Tires for their bad tires? So Acme Fireworks, for the purposes of court, can go to court just like you or I could. It is a juristic person, artificial entity. Now, with the 14th Amendment, the co uh, Congress has invented a juristic person. It is a, a non-existent corporation. So, We, the people, ordain and establish the Constitution. When we do that, we create Congress. So, who works for who? Congress works for us. They are subordinate to us. When Congress basically or presumably ratified the 14th Amendment, they created a U.S. citizen. Now, where is, what status does a United States citizen have to Congress? All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to its jurisdiction. You are subordinate to Congress if you're a United States citizen. So this is a second class of citizen. It was uh, generated just after the Civil War. Basically, to give blacks privileges. So we thought that the 13th Amendment freed the blacks and brought them up to our level. Except the 14th Amendment basically raised all, lowered all the whites down to their level. You have privileges. You don't have rights. The moment that you are born and they lay you on your mother's chest, you are...